Good morning, everyone. Welcome to other scale Zoom online worship. I'm not gonna lie, it's a bummer. It's a bummer that we cannot have worship right here, right now, at this place. Um, it's been great to see everyone back in the sanctuary since July to worship God together and to have fellowship together. So it's a bummer. It, it really, it's really sad that we cannot see each other at least for a while. However, our church leaders agree that this must be the, the decision we had to make for the safety of everyone. So thank you for your understanding and support. I believe that we can still be a church. Um, all the things we've been, we've been learning throughout this pandemic about how to be a church I think applies to this uh, situation as well. We can still check on each other by uh, phone call, texting, email, or food delivery, or good old mail. All the things we learned during this pandemic. We can continue to do that and we can continue to be a church. I actually be believe that we can, we can be an even stronger church by uh, having worship online and having all these things and doing all these things together, sharing our love with one another in all the creative ways we can think of. So everyone, please stay safe and stay healthy and stay happy. Um, so until we can resume in-person worship, we will offer this online Zoom live worship from the sanctuary. There will be a liturgist and pianist and myself, the preacher, and Reverend John or a tech person in the back. So we're gonna have a minimum number of per people in the sanctuary to lead the worship together for you. Um, so you can join in um, the worship at the same time, uh, the regular time at 10 a.m. each Sunday. You just don't have to drive, drive up here. Uh, so let me talk about a few instructions about Zoom online worship. First of all, uh, you may or you may not turn on your camera. Uh, personally, I will appreciate if you turn on your camera and show your face. And, and I think a lot of people will appreciate that, like to, to be able to see one another during worship. I think that will be wonderful. But I understand that Zoom fatigue is real. And if, um, if you feel like you're not properly dressed, you probably don't want to turn on your camera. Or if, you, if you have any technical issue, we understand that you don't, you don't, you cannot turn on your camera. So it's totally your option. So you may or may not turn on your camera. Second, uh, we'd like to ask you to please stay muted so that um, externally you don't distract others' worship experience. Uh, we will make sure everyone's muted. Uh, but while you are muted, we encourage you to sing out loud, sing your heart out, sing your lung out. Like, why not, right? Um, no one's going to listen to you. I mean, your spouse, kids, your dog may listen to you, but they already know. They already know that you are a great singer. So please feel free to sing out loud and uh, enjoy the worship. Um, and we encourage you to use the chat option. If you have an announcement or if you have a prayer request, please use the chat to share that with us and we will acknowledge that during the worship here. Um, for offering, you can mail the check to the church or you can use our website to make the donation to the church. Uh, if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Uh, and after worship, we are going to have a Zoom fellowship. So please stay if you are available. Uh, I'd love to listen to your stories, like how you're doing, and we can check on one another, and we will have a topic to share each other's stories. Um, I know, I know it's a bummer, but I still, I also think that it's a blessing. It's a blessing that we can still worship God in this way and we can still connect, connect it, stay connected in this um, best way possible. So let us worship God together.
Good morning and uh, welcome to online uh, Aldersgate worship service on this January Sunday. Um, it, it is a little disconcerting to be up here in front of an empty room, although it's great to have Joanne's music. That's always wonderful. And as I was telling John, you know, um, having kids, talking to a room and getting no feedback. I, I have children, so it's <laughs> kind of the, <laughs> I'm kind of used to that. <laughs> So I want to start with some announcements, and um, if I can kick it off, I wanted to let everyone know that uh, Aldersgate Week at Hotel de Zinc will be February 13th through 19th. There'll be a sign-up link on the, in the newsletter. But just as a refresher, um, Hotel de Zinc is a floating homeless shelter that moves monthly to different churches in the area. And uh, for many, many, many years, Aldersgate has helped uh, when the Hotel is hosted by Wesley United Methodist in Palo Alto, and uh, we provide a week's, of dinner, a week's worth of dinner. So the hotel shelter works like this. At 7 o'clock, uh, 12 to 18 homeless adults are led into the churches for a hot meal and a warm, dry place to sleep. There is a case manager from Life Moves, which is a nonprofit that's working to get people into affordable housing. Um, and Aldersgate, again, for many, many years, has helped at Wesley to, um, to provide dinners there. And there'll be a sign-up. You don't have to do, it's usually a groups of people that get together to make dinner, so you don't have to do the whole thing all by yourself. Um, and if you have any questions, please contact me. My contact information is in the newsletter, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. So um, we have a lot of great cooks here. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what um, everyone does for Hotel de Zinc in February. Again, February 13th through 19th. Um, probably you saw that from the email that Lynn is selling the famous teriyaki sauce. Um, the slide before? Yes, so please contact Lynn, lynnkachuko at gmail.com to arrange your pickup date. Um, I mean, we, we give thanks to uh, the family that, that they have great gift of making awesome teriyaki sauce and uh, selling this for the church. So please uh, send an email to her if you're interested. A plug for the uh, Lynn's teriyaki sauce. It is like the best thing. I have a friend in uh, Virginia who uh, we have to figure out a way to get her a, a jar because she's, she's, it, it's just so good. Okay, so t we're gonna do our three deep breaths. We're gonna inhale to the count of two, hold it for two, and exhale to the count of four. Okay, so everybody uh, find a place to sit. Get your feet on the floor. Let's inhale. Hold for two. Exhale, two, three, four. Again, inhale, hold, and exhale. One more time, inhale. Hold, and exhale. So please join me for the call to worship. Uh, I will read the L, and please join in for the, with the part listed P. We lift up in praise and worship the new year and the continued presence of God. We celebrate, we celebrate in worship, worship near, near and far, in, in this sanctuary and in our homes through our common, common faith. We may be distant, but we are together. We may be separated, but we are one body united in Christ. We, we continue, continue to move as one, one body, one, one church, church, focused on, on our God. God. Amen. Amen. Please rise if you are able or not, um, and join us in hymn 254, We Three Kings, verses 1, 2, and 5. Please sing out loud. We three kings of
children's time. My name is Anne and I'd like to share a story with you called They All Saw a Cat by Brendan Wenzel. The cat walked through the world with its whiskers, ears, and paws and the child saw a cat. And the dog saw a cat. Hmm. And the fox saw a cat. Yes, they all saw the cat. Same cat. Hmm. The cat walked through the world with its whiskers, ears, and paws. And the fish saw a cat. Guess that's what a cat looks like to a goldfish. And the mouse saw a cat. Wow. I guess if you're a mouse, the cat looks pretty scary. And the bee saw a cat. Yes, they all saw the cat. The cat walked through the world with its whiskers, ears, and paws. And the bird saw a cat. Way down here. Cat looks pretty small, I guess, if you're high in the sky. And the flea saw a cat. Wow, the cat looks pretty big, I guess, if you're a flea. And the snake saw a cat. And the skunk saw a cat. Gee, look at that, same cat. They look so different to the different animals. And the worm saw a cat. The worm doesn't really have eyes, but I think it can feel the vibrations of the cat. And the bat saw a cat. Yes, they all saw the cat. Yes, they all saw a cat. Look at how different he is. A child, and a dog, and a fox, and a fish, and a mouse, and a bee, and a bird, and a flea, and a snake, and a skunk, and a worm, and a bat. The cat knew them all, and they all knew the cat. And the cat walked through the world with its whiskers, ears, and paws, and it came to the water. And imagine what it saw. Imagine what a cat looks like to a cat. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the gift of imagination. So the author, Brendan Wenzel, could show us a cat through the eyes of a flea and a bird and a bat. Remind us to use our imagination to see from different points of view to help us appreciate and understand the people and the world around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Okay, I guess the kids are dismissed to Sunday school, wherever that is, so your kids can go to Sunday school now. Um, please join me for the prayer of the people. God of mercy, you are unbounded by time and space. You see the past, present, and future. Help us to recognize your presence with us, to bring us together for the purpose of being your body into the world. Help us with your presence, wisdom, and vision. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. As we continue on in this time of prayer, I did not see any prayers listed uh, in the chat box uh, at this time. So let us continue to uh, lift up those who are on our prayer list and those who are on our hearts and minds this day. Loving and gracious God, we lift up to you those, those who are on our minds. We lift up to you Amy Wake, Brandon Louie, Chloe Gong, Dale Schwab, Gianluca Lupo, Ginger Powell, Harry Hadasaka, Harue Ng, Hien Go, Janice Curry, Camilla Young, Kikuko Nieda, Leah Haritani, Michelle Nieda, Mitzi Takimoto, Peter Tome, Ray Archide, Shige Nobu Sekine, the many folks that are on our hearts and minds, along with those who are now isolated in fear of this recent wave of COVID, God. We ask that you continue to surround each and every one of these persons with your love and grace. Hold them in your arms and continue to be present with them. Pour your love and grace on each and every one of them and surround them with your love. Loving God, we thank you very much for all that you do in our lives. We thank you that you are God who continues to be present with us into the new year and that you continue to renew our hearts and minds. But we do lift up all our praises to you along with our fearful hearts this day. Hearing of the numbers rising of COVID, being affected by isolation and the fear of needing to take a COVID test and trying to find tests. We admit that we do have fears and uncertainties and doubts, God. Amidst this, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came to all of us at a time when our fears were heightened as well. And that through your son, you brought truth and life for us all. And so we ask you, God, for your strength for our body, mind, and soul to turn our fears into truths, to turn their fears into healing and hope, to turn our fears into a place of resurrection, of life for us all. We lift all, thi all these things along with the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's scripture is from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 to 7. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight, and honored, and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Good morning, everyone. Um, since we are doing Zoom live, uh, we can actually do more interactive uh, style of worship. So if you can use the chat box and say hello, then I can see that. Can somebody do that? Yes, thank you, Lara. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Alice. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, if you're using your computer, you should be able to see the screen, the slide, and also my face. Is that working? Is it lagging? Then I'll, I'll turn, up, turn up this camera. Okay. Hopefully this will be better. <laughs> so I'll be looking at here and looking at you. Uh, when I look here, I'm actually looking at you, so please don't think I'm ignoring you. All right. Um, so before I get started, I'd like to give you an update about my New Year's resolution. I just wanted to let you know that, you know, last year I shared that my New Year's resolution is actually to exercise more and stay healthy. So I've been doing that. I'm actually sore because I've been working out too much, I guess. I can show you this picture as a proof. Next slide, please. Uh, so yesterday, I went out morning walk with my kids. We we had like uh, 40 minutes of walk. It was very nice. After the rain, the air was so clean, and we had fun. So folks, stay healthy, stay, um, stay, uh, stay healthy, and stay happy. Uh, and I wanted to let you know that because you are not here, I put a bunch of stuffed animals here in the sanctuary. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> I borrowed some of the stuff the animals from Lucy and Aiden and place them instead of you. Yes. Yes. Okay, can you see? <laughs> okay. So there are a bunch of stuffed animals representing you in the sanctuary, so please don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, it's a new time, uh, and it's a challenging time for all of us, but I think we are trying to find the best way to continue to be a church, to worship God, and uh, to share our love with one another. Let us pray. Oh, well, gracious and loving God, thank you so much for calling us to be in the place of worship, wherever we are in this morning. God, we just ask that come to us and help us to feel your presence in us, among us, and around us. May all the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my rock, my redeemer. Amen. All right, so last Sunday we read and reflected on a scripture passage from Jeremiah, and we talked about how that message was given to the people who were in exile. And today's scripture is, com uh, is coming from a chapter uh, in Isaiah, and this passage was actually given to the people who were in exile. So uh, for these two first weeks of Sunday, 
of 2022, we are reading two uh, prophecies and promises were given to different groups of people living in two different places, but at the same time. There are too many twos, right? Um, so I think it's, it's important for us to understand the context, to understand the text. So the text from Jeremiah and text from Isaiah were written around the time of 6th century BCE. So around 597 BCE, what happened was the Babylonians conquered Jerusalem because King Zedekiah of Judah rebelled against Babylon. So the famous Nebuchadnezzar II conquered Jerusalem, completely destroyed the Jerusalem temple. And what they did was arguably the most horrific thing in history, uh, in human history, a human could do to another human. Uh, they actually killed all the sons of Je King Zedekiah in front of the father and plucked out the eyes of the king so that they made sure the last thing the king saw was the death of his own sons. I mean, when we think about that, uh, just just how evil is it, right? I mean, how could you even think about that kind of punishment? And why did they do that? To inflict, inflict pain and fear to the people. They just wanted to make sure this uh, rebellious people would never stand against Babylon again. So they're giving an example, right? If you rebel against us, you're going to end up being like your king, King Zedekiah. So in that, um, so indeed, these people were in fear. Can you, I mean, think about it. Uh, their king, uh, his life was destroyed in that way, and they took almost every upper crust people in the country and took them to Babylon. They forced them to move to Babylon. So both of those who were remaining or those who were in exile were in very, were going through a very difficult time as you can imagine. But there was a deeper problem, the theological problem, that in that ancient Near Eastern context, in the culture, when these two countries had a fight, when these two tribes had a fight, they thought of it as a fight between their gods. Like, so, so when uh, Babylon conquered Jerusalem and they won the battle against Israel, Israel people had to deal with this theological question. I mean, does this mean our God, Yahweh, is defeated by Babylonian god Marduk. And also they believe that temple was a dwelling, literally dwell, dwelling place of God. So when the Jerusalem temple was completely destroyed, they had to deal with this theological question of where is our God now? Where is our God? Does that mean our God abandoned us? Does that mean God punished us forever? I mean, what happened to God? God's promise, the covenant God made with David, King David, uh, that his kingdom was going to be forever. So either God is defeated or God is not with us anymore. So that was the deep theological question they had to deal with. And, and we can imagine that that really caused them to live in deep fear and pain. And to that context, the today's scripture was given. So the promise and prophecy that was given to the people who were in exile was something like this. If I, if I paraphrase this passage, it's like this. I made you. I formed you. I created you. I know each of you by name. And you are mine. Next slide. So because... You are precious in my sight, and I love you. I will bring you home. I mean, you can talk about all those mega kingdoms like Egypt, Ethiopia, or Seba. Seba was one of the biggest uh, southern kingdom in that time, 6th century BCE. Next slide, please. And they are nothing. They are nothing compared to you because you are my children. So do not fear, for I am with you. That was the promise that was given to the people of God in times of trouble, in times of fear and pain. And I believe that God's promise for us during this time of pandemic must be the same. 
You know, this passage, this particular passage from uh, Isaiah chapter 43 is my mother's uh, favorite, one of the, my mother's favorite Bible verses. So, um, when I was in military service in Korean context, all the males are uh, um, required, it's mandatory for us to serve in the military. So I served in the military from 1991 to 2001. And actually I got injured um, by, the la by, the first, uh, by the end of the first six weeks of training. So you can imagine that my mom was so worried. So it was not like I could quit and just come home. So uh, my mother was praying for me every day, citing this particular scripture. I guess she's praying to God, holding on to this promise that God was going to be with her son all the time. Even when he's going through the time of time like passing through the waters or passing through fire, uh, she believed that. And this uh, scripture um, helped her to believe that God was with me. Well, now as a father to two little children, I can totally relate to that, and I could see why this passage provide her with so much comfort. Growing up, in our generation, we never experienced this kind of pandemic, right? Um, Lucy told me that she has 21 classmates in her class, but nine of them didn't come for the first day. And the three of them had COVID, and many other kids had the COVID-like symptoms like cold, so they were cautious, couldn't come. I mean, it's been more than two full years and last year, I saw an interview of a teenager saying, we feel like we are deprived of good memories during this time. And they are going through a difficult time, for sure. I mean, just, just the fact that they cannot have play date anymore, it's really sad. Some say it's only the matter of when we get, get this virus, not if. And when we think about those, our kids, and when we think about those who are in, in a challenging health condition, I think we should be afraid, we should be worried. When we hear that this Omicron variant is very transmissible, we should be afraid because, because we care about those vulnerable people around us. We fear because we care. So it's not necessarily a bad thing that we do have fear. And fear psychologically is a kind of protect mechanism that prevent, prevents us from doing something risky, like jumping out of the window. We don't do that because fear stops us uh, from doing that kind of thing. Um, but the problem is, the real problem is that some often or sometimes fear leads to anxiety. As I shared during my sermon last week, uh, I recently experienced anxiety attack. It was like for the first time in my life. Um, when fear of losing consciousness consumed my body, I started to freak out, I started to have anxiety attack, and I forgot how to breathe normally, and that caused more problem that, uh, that made my situation get worse and worse. Well, according to Paul Tillich, a theologian, uh, one of the most influential theologians in the first and the 20th century, um, this book, Courage to Be, is a very well written. It's a very interesting book. And in this book, he talks about that there are three different types of anxiety. The first type is called the anxiety of death. So when fear of losing ourselves losing our being itself uh, consumes us, we, we, get, we get this anxiety of death. And anxiety of, uh, the second type of anxiety is the anxiety of meaninglessness. I think a good example of midlife crisis, like when you feel like, when you question about the meaning of your life, like have I done anything meaningful in my life? What's the worth, what's the meaning of my life? When that kind of question consumes you, I think you would get this anxiety of meaninglessness. The third type of anxiety is anxiety of guilt and condemnation. So when the question like, what if, 
Um, you know, we are not perfect. What if what I have done in the past is uh, have has permanent effect on my life and others? When we are consumed by this fear of uh, punishment, eternal punishment, I, th I think we can get this kind of anxiety. And Pontelli argues that the key to overcome anxiety is to have the courage. So what kind of courage? The courage to be. And according to him, uh, the courage to be, next slide, is actually to cur is, is a courage to accept the ac acceptance. Is the courage to accept that I am accepted just as who I am, just as, uh, broken, uh, just as broken as I am by God, in spite of my unperfect, in spite, of, in, in spite of all my faults and flaws, God is accepting us. And the courage we need in times of fear is the courage to accept the acceptance. And he's, he thinks that this is, is the definition of faith. So friends, I believe that the scripture that is given us today reminds us of who we are and reminds us of that we need this kind of courage this day, these days. I mean, we do not have to fear. It, um, not because fear is necessarily a bad thing, but because we do not need to live in fear. We do not need to walk in fear. We do not let the fear to make decisions for us. Yes, it might be like we are passing through waters or fire. But even in that kind of situation, God is with us. God's promise for us is that God will always be with us. God reminds us who we are. God made us and God loves us. So let us have this courage to accept this God's unconditional acceptance and live and walk in confidence that God is always with us. So for conclusion, I'd like to share this song with you. And this song is called You Are Mine, um, composed by David Haas. He's still active in Minnesota. Um, so this song is inspired by today's scripture. Isaiah chapter 43, and it talks about how God is with us and we do not need to be afraid. I hope that this song reminds all of us that God's love for us is forever and we do not need to walk and live in fear, but we are called to stand, walk, and live in the confidence that God's love for us is forever. Oh, we. 
am strength for all the despairing Healing for the ones who dwell in shame All the blind will see The lame may all run free And all will know my name closing hymn is hymn number 128, He Leadeth Me. Please feel free to stand and sing as loud as you can.
May you go in peace, knowing that God is always with you. Even when you feel like you're passing through waters, when you feel like you're passing through fire, God's promise for you is that you are mine. I love you and I will be with you. May you hold on to this promise, walk, live, and know that God is with you. Amen.